Hi there, my name's Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland. Uh, this is one of my basic skills videos that are on my YouTube channel and on this video I'm going to show you how to um, first of all diagnose there you go a squeaking fan belt or a loose fan belt and then how to adjust it. A real common problem and if it's left the belt will very very quickly wear out and you'll be faced with having to fit a brand new belt. If you catch it in time and it's just come a little bit loose through normal wear and tear then chances are that belt's going to last a lot longer. As you can hear in the background we've got a problem on that old Ford laser. Okay so a bit earlier on I noticed when I was driving this vehicle around the yard that I noticed that the, uh, there was a bit of a squeak and that squeak is coming directly from the drive on the alternator. If I give it a bit of rev didn't sound very good at all did it? Now if you look down here we're going to see on the um, timing cover a heap of residue and this is all bits of rubber that have come off that belt and that's a real good telltale sign that there's a bit of a problem. What you can also do with the engine stopped is just push down on the belt with your finger and just see how there you go look just see how much flex and how much pressure you've got to put on the belt to get it to, uh, to deflect. Now there is some adjustment on this belt and all we need to do is undo this bolt here and then lever the alternator further away from the engine and that will tension the belt up. There is a second belt on here and that's the power steering belt but that one feels really tight whereas the alternator belt feels quite slack. So we'll adjust the alternator belt, I'll show you how to do that and hopefully that squeaking noise is going to go away. If it doesn't, we're going to have to fit a new, a new fan belt. Okay, so to adjust the fan belt, it's pretty easy on this particular car, real easy to get to. We've got the adjuster bolt here. Now we need to slacken that off. And then on this particular vehicle, we just use a, a crowbar between the alternator and the, uh, the engine block. And we lever the alternator a bit further away from the engine block. It's a bit of an old school way of doing it. Uh, quite a lot of vehicles nowadays actually have an adjuster that we can like a, uh, a really long bolt that you adjust, you turn the bolt and that increases the distance between the alternator pulley and the engine and the engine block. Okay, so we just get in there with a little crowbar. The other one was a bit too big. And you can see the alternator moving away from the engine. There we go. Now as regards the right amount of tension, you should still be able to deflect the belt a little bit. We say about 10 to 15 mil deflection under normal sort of human pressure on there. One finger pressure. And whilst you're holding that until it starts on the bolt to get tight and then you can just tweak it up with the crowbar out of the way. Now don't over tighten because um, probably somebody in the past will have over tightened this and that bolt's probably going to be quite, quite close to snapping. So as regards tension, just push down on the belt and it should deflect about 10 mil. Now if once I start the engine up um, the squeaky noise is still there then it means that the belt has worn too much and will need to be replaced. So let's find out. Okay, so we'll uh, just start the engine up. Uh, I'll put the headlights on to put a bit of a load on the alternator. Um, and if it's going to slip, that now will be the time it slips again. There we go, so a bit of a rev. Oh, that's excellent. Fantastic stuff. So basically there's no more squeak, there's no more slipping of that belt. Um, the final test obviously would be the road test. Um, what we'll do is we'll crank on the headlights, which I just had on a minute ago, but we'll put all the ancillaries on possible to load up that alternator. Maybe even have the headlights on for 10-15 minutes with the engine not running, just to run the battery down a bit and put as much load on the alternator as we can to try and make that belt slip. If it does slip again, 
and it's going to need to be replaced. Okay, now my fault, it wasn't the easiest thing to see what I was doing on the car as regards adjusting the fan belt. Um, so I'm going to do a quick, quick diagram to show you exactly what's going on and how that belt tensions up on that particular car. And those Ford lasers, pretty much the same as your Nissan Patrols, uh, as your Ford Couriers. You know, most alternators mount just with two mount bolts. They have a main pivot down the bottom and then they have the, the, the slider mount which is pretty much opposite and you undo the slider, the pinch bolts and then you can lever the alternator back a bit more and tweak it up and it holds that position. But I'll show you on a drawing and then you'll know exactly what I mean. Okay so we've got our trusty bit of cardboard and um, if this is the the alternator body here look and it has a has a lug let's say at the top and a big lug at the bottom and we've got the alternator body comes around like that and we've got the pulley on the front and that has a belt that goes around the pulley and then goes off down to the crankshaft and we have a bolt down the bottom which we couldn't see on camera and we also have the adjuster bolt at the top now on that adjuster bolt there is basically a bracket that has a groove in it and that bolts onto the engine block now as we adjust the alternator further away from the engine which is here that increases the distance between this pulley and the other two pulleys. We've got a pulley here and a pulley down there look for the belt and that essentially makes the belt tighter and we've got this slot in this top bracket and once we run out of travel on that top bracket it tells us that you know the only way we're going to stop or be able to tension that belt up again is to actually um, replace the belt to get a new one and the reason for that is the belt is what's called v-section which means the profile of the belt is a bit like that and these here are the wearing sides these are the wearing surfaces and as that belt wears i.e. when it's slipping it wears a lot but they do wear on a normal use as well as, as everything does on the car that profile changes and the belt essentially gets narrower now it sits inside a pulley which also has this V-shape machined into it. And as that belt wears, it sits lower and lower on the pulley. Now, as a rule of thumb, if you run your finger across the top of the belt and the belt sits lower in the pulley than the top of the pulley edge, that's a good indication that the belt is worn out. Um, because as those sides wear, the belt gets thinner and it drops deeper into the pulley. So there's a few telltale signs. You could run your finger over the top and find out if the belt's worn out or excessively worn. That's why it's slipping. Uh, or if you're going to run out of travel on this bracket here as well, then that again is a good indication that your belt has reached the end of its life. That's assuming the person that fitted the last belt to it fitted the correct one. That's not always the case. Some garages, they'll take the old belt off and they'll measure it on a tool a special measuring tool which measures the length of it uh, and that doesn't really take into account how worn the belt is and sometimes they fit a belt that's the next size up in which case you know you've lost half of your adjustment straight away which doesn't help okay so adjusting fan belts um, sometimes it's really easy sometimes it's really really hard if you have to replace a fan belt then sometimes you've got to take other belts off first to get down to the fan belt, to the, to the one that does the alternator. We call them fan belts because traditionally that belt also ran the cooling fan for the radiator because most cars were rear-wheel rear -wheel drive back then. Um, but realistically it is called an alternator belt. So if you need to change the alternator belt and go and buy a new one, just tell them it's an alternator belt that you need. Yes, yeah, so if you come to have to order a new belt, and this is a brand new belt, um, you can see, without even taking it out of the packaging, Around the belt will be these numbers here. Now 13, that stands for the thickness of the belt. So this is a 13 mil, or what we call a half inch belt. 13 mil across the flats um, when it's brand new. Now the next number here, 09, what is it, 0915, that means that the belt is 915 millimeters in length. And it's far more accurate for you to get that number off your old belt and give it to your parts supplier than it is to try and take any kind of measurement you know now obviously if the belt snapped and it's on the on the motorway somewhere 
Um, chances are your car is either overheated or it's um, the battery's gone flat as a result of that then you're not going to have the old belt and you're not going to know the number. So you're going to be very reliant on the part supplier matching up the right belt for you. But it's a good idea once you get that and you know it's the right one to make a note of that number in your handbook in the glove box. That way you know for next time. Okay, so hopefully you found that helpful. My name is Andy Young. I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland. And this is one of my short basic skills videos. So that one covered how to tighten up a fan belt and also to how to diagnose if the fan belt's completely worn out so you're going to need a new one. And all of this comes around because you can hear that squealing noise, you know, it's slipping. It's not right, there's a problem. Okay, uh, any questions or comments, please leave them down at the bottom and, uh, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Please don't forget, if you found this video to be useful, please subscribe to my channel and uh, then you'll get notifications of when any new videos are uploaded. Okay, thanks for watching. Cheers!